Thank you for joining us. One gunshot wounded an entire community last night on Shaw Street in Utica. A Utica police officer shot and killed 13-year-old Noa Mue, who they say was carrying what appeared to be a handgun. It turned out to be a replica. The chaos and tragedy of the night poured over into City Hall this morning as officials held a press conference about the fatal shooting. A warning, some of you might find the video we're about to show graphic and difficult to watch. News Channel 2's Jolene Ferris reports. Several members of the local Karen community, including the child's mother, filled the lobby at Utica City Hall today for a press conference about the fatal shooting of her 13-year-old son by Utica police Friday night. Our condolences to the families, the community, and all of Utica. The police chief said officers had stopped two juveniles in connection with an investigation. The crowd started shouting. While fleeing, the youth displayed what appeared to be a handgun. The gun turned out to be a replica of a Glock, a pellet gun. As the mayor and police chief passed the microphone back and forth between the two of them and an interpreter, the atmosphere grew more tense. Officials shut down the press conference and the mayor walked over to the young victim's clearly grieving mother for a brief exchange. Whatever reaction comes from an event like this um, should be met with an understanding that it's warranted. Officials offered to meet privately with the victim's family, then moved the press conference upstairs to the mayor's conference room, where the incident was further discussed, but in the context of a video circulating on social media, which police confirm is of the incident. They also discussed the law that allows them to meet deadly physical force with deadly physical force. The officers quite frequently work in situations that are very chaotic, ever evolving, and they have to make split second decisions. Having said that, having said that, yes, we meet deadly physical force with deadly physical force, including if there appears to be a handgun, whether it's replica or not. In the video, you can see officers' hands flying while the teen suspect is on the ground. It, it may have looked like a punch. The reality is if he's got a handgun, and at that time that, that the officer, that's his only self, uh, defense is throwing a punch, to make sure he doesn't use the handgun, that it would see them be reasonable. Police chief says officer body-worn camera footage from a less obstructed vantage point will soon be released and, he expects, answer many questions. Can you discuss any scenarios where, in your estimation, it's, or I guess more importantly, in the eyes of the law, it's acceptable or necessary to shoot a suspect who is on the ground? I think once we release the full body cam yeah. with the snippets, it, it was much more so. clear as to what precipitated the shooting. Members of the Karen community who filled the City Hall lobby stayed outside City Hall once the press conference ended. Many had seen the video. The answers that I had, I did not go away satisfied because they didn't match, match up with um, what some of the witnesses were saying, um, what was being circulated around on social media. The police chief assured everyone there will be an outside, unbiased investigation by the state attorney general's office, as well as an internal one to determine if department policies were followed and training adhered to. Regardless of those outcomes, the chief said there are always consequences for the officers. I've seen officers that have been involved in officer involved shootings. They've never been able to come back to the job. They're traumatized for life over this. I've even been aware of one officer who took his own life because is involved in an officer life shooting. Police said not to expect any more press conferences, but that they would be available from this point forward on a one-on-one -on -one basis to answer questions to the extent that they're available because this is the state attorney general's office's investigation now. Back to you. The three officers involved are on paid administrative leave pending the outcomes of the investigations. Police expect to release their names at a later time. A candlelight vigil will be held to honor the teen at 8 o'clock this evening in the 900 block of Shaw Street.